Hi everyone and welcome to Maya 2014. My name is Kiranova Sapin and today I'm going to be showing you how to create image based lighting for your um, movies, films and pretty much anything else. It's really handy in visual effects to get that nice spherical environment in your scene. Alright, let's get started. First, we just want to come into our render settings by clicking this little tab here and going down and enabling our mental ray. Brilliant. Now we just want to make sure our default lights are off in the scene because we don't need them. Alright, now let's go to our presets and turn on our 720p. That's just a good starting frame to get started and let's just chuck that onto JPEG. Brilliant. Alright, now let's just go to our image based lighting and click create. And that's our little sphere down there. We can scale that up in a second. But first we just want to come up to our presets and load our production. Um, most people should have presets, otherwise it would actually be under features and you can just click production in there if you have an older version of Maya. Brilliant. Alright, let's turn on final gathering and ambient occlusion. And that's all we need to do. And let's just close this. Alright, now press R or come to our scale tool and just scale this bad boy up. Like that, like that. And this is our scene. Now, what I like to do before I get started is just quickly set up my viewpoint 2.0 and if you don't have this um, basically it just allows you to see the lights and everything will be setting up in real time and all you need to do is turn on multi-sample analyzing anti-analyzing and screen ambient occlusion brilliant and that's all we need from there so just close that and let's just grab this and we just want to import a HDR image and I've got my this church harvest lobby um, basically it's just an interior so if you press 5 you can bring up the texture and we can see it now so basically we're looking around our 3D environment that we shot while we were um, on location which is brilliant alright now we just need a quick scene to set up so let's just drop down a ground plane and it's always good to name your stuff so just call it ground and I'm just gonna set up a nice sphere that I can, um, a chrome ball, that we can see what's actually going on in the scene. And press space and space just so we can switch the views. And space and space back to our normal view again. Brilliant. Alright, now let's just also drop in a cube and just get that so we can see some of the, the points in there. Okay, brilliant. Now let's just come over to our hyper shade. We don't need our workspace. We can drop that down. And we just want to make a blend. So make a new texture, a new shader, what are we actually going to call it? We're going to call this chrome underscore shader. It's always important to name your stuff so people know how when it's work what you're working with and stuff. Alright, so we've got color. Let's just pump this up to white. And our reflectivity up to white. And that's oh, all up to one. And that's pretty much all you need. Let's just click refractions and just then middle click drag onto the chrome ball and I'll just make another quick blend and I'm just going to call this cube mat underscore shader brilliant now I'm just going to make this uh, like a darker darker grey brilliant and just come to our specular and just turn that down a little bit Right now, drag that on, and that's all done. Look at that. All right, we can close that now, and just control space to full screen our view, so we can get a nice view of what's going to happen. All right, so now, if we control space back out of that, if we click our view gate, we can see what our render is going to render. Our view is going to render. Let's just click render and see what's going to happen. Okay, so we're getting some reflections and refractions on our materials. Um, what I actually made a mistake on our cube, on our chrome, is that we actually need that to be black for it, so we don't have any of this kind of washed out look. And on my um, cube shader, I accidentally left the reflectivity of so we don't want it to reflect we just want it to catch the light so let's just try that again and now we're getting a one-to-one -one reflection on our cube on our ball sorry 
and our cube is picking up the lighting quite nicely. Okay, now I just want to quickly put a key light in. So to do that, oh, I'm just going to quickly scale up my scene a bit. It's not going to affect the um, reflections, but it will just help us in the long haul. Okay, brilliant. Now I'll just turn this off. Now what you want to do, if you've enabled Viewpoint 2.0, we can come up to our lighting and say Use All Lights, and then just click Shadows, and press 6, so we can see our lights. Brilliant. Okay, now we just want to come up Create, a new light, directional light, and just bring this over here, and let's just rotate it down on the scene. And you might be thinking, well, we just enabled the shadows, but I can't see it anywhere. Well, it's really simple. We just click Use Depth Shadows, and we should be seeing it right now, but we it switched back to Use Default Lighting. So we just want to say Use All Lights, and now we can see that we have these really blocky shadows. You wouldn't think that's a sphere, would you? But the way we can fix that is if we come up and just turn this up to 2000, around about that, and just flick the size on, and now we've got a nice little real-time view of what's actually happening to our lights. So that's a nice little key light. So let's just bring the camera back to around about where we had it. Switch on this so we can see. And bring this up and just keep that image and give this a quick render. And we should see that the scene's a bit brighter and with the shadows are in the scene now. Brilliant. So that's looking quite nice. It's looking quite good. Now we're getting a bit of specular on our chrome, so let's just um, come in here quickly and just crank this down because we don't want any any of that. And if we give this another quick render, we should see that that um, specular disappears. And I think I killed that a little bit too much. Um, I think we actually have to cut this color. I have to be up for this. Uh, I'm more of a um, 3ds Max user, and that's how you're supposed to do it. No, okay, it must it must be the other way. All right, so keep this black, and bring up the eccentricity. Try that. Eccentricity. No. Or is it specular roll off? Is that it? Because the whole thing's specular. I guess that makes sense. There we go. Alright. So you have to have the, the specular roll roll off the whole way up. That now we're not getting any um, specular shadows from our, our lights. Alright, so you see these shadows are looking pretty harsh. We can probably just flip it over to our um, our proper shadows now. So let's just come out to our outliner and click our directional light. I'm just going to quickly call this our, our key light. Brilliant. And just come and use ray trace shadows and pump this up to about 30. I don't want it 50. I want 30 and make this 15. And now, if we give this a render, you'll see that it looks much, much nicer. Yeah, the shadows are much softer now, which is nice. That would be good for like an overcast day or something. And this is quite noisy under here where the shadows are, so we'd have to come in and then um, turn up the ray shadows, shadow rays, to actually make it better. So if we compare that to what we had, it's looking quite nice. Brilliant. So that's pretty much a very simple setup of um, image-based lighting. Um, there's not much else that we need to do. Um, in the following tutorials, we'll look at how to fix this up and um, make it unrenderable, like the ground plane unrenderable, put a matte surface on it, and get rid of the background. Well, you can actually, we'll get rid of the background right now. All you need to do is just select it and come up to your thing. And, oops, sorry, in here. Is it in here? In here? Around the snats. And, uh, which one is it? Which one is it? I don't think it's primary visibility. Is it? Yeah, I'll wing it. If we get the reflections in the ball still, then we're good. 
Yes, alright, so that gets rid of it, and that actually keeps that alpha channel free for us. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so this would be what you'd, you'd untick that. Yeah, there we go. So the alpha channel is clean for us when we want to do that. And look at um, image based lighting is amazing because it's only 16 seconds, which is fantastic for um, stuff. But usually, when you um, use this kind of stuff, oh well, look at that. The um, the there's still the alpha channel on that as well. Uh, okay, no, I know why because of the um, if in V-Ray when you have the environment on it, it actually just blends the whole image together. But in Mental Ray, it actually does this, which is quite quite good. All right, um, thanks for watching. Um, tune in next time for another great tutorial, and I'll probably be talking about rigging, and we'll also set up a scene where we can get rid of the floor plane and set it up with some render elements that we can export to After Effects or Nuke and composite them together to create some stunning imagery. Well, thanks for tuning in guys and like, favorite, subscribe and tell me what you want. These are some little funny jelly things that I was messing around with in um, N-Cloth. Um, if you want to know more, let me know and I'll show you. Um, and yeah, thank you.